All right, everyone. Welcome to the Gaming Stadium Anniversary Tournament for Valorant. I'm Johnny Esports, your play-by-play -play on the day. I'm joined by Bowser. How you doing, my dude? Dude, I'm feeling awesome. Excited for some matches today. It's going to be yeah. some exciting games. And uh, just to go over a little bit how we got here and where we are right now. So the Gaming Stadiums Tournament, second year anniversary tournament, is a, a Swiss bracket style tournament. And now we'll be going into our playoffs. So for our first quarters game today, we're going to have Swag and Friends taking on Puggers. And both these teams are very, very strong. Do you want to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about like the record and how uh, the, the rosters of the team? Yeah, yeah, both these teams come in with two and one records. Uh, they didn't play each other yet during the tournament, so we don't really have any information how they are head to head. But um, in their wins, they've, they've both been pretty dominant. Uh, Swag and Friends versus Dogwater and Team Body Improvement, 13-3, 13-8 there. Puggers in their wins, 13-1 and 13-4. But they both have those 7 and 13 losses against In Control and t -Vol respectively. So it could be interesting how that kind of ends up shaking it up because uh, it, it's a little bit hard to tell who's going to be stronger straight up in this matchup. Um, some individual players, names I recognize. I remember P Nasty over here and last time I casted Valorant. This kid absolutely popped off. Definitely expect potentially that to, to continue on with this tournament, but um, it, it just sets up for a nice quarterfinal. And the, the scary part of quarterfinal is they played this whole Swiss rounds all, all day. Quarterfinal is only a best of one. And they got to get it done in one map. Yeah, and one map, the one map's going to be Ascent as well. So an Ascent, mm -hmm. very default heavy map. Very important to play the information game well. Take control of spaces such as like B main and A main, mm -hmm. as well as mid. So whoever plays this map the best is going to be moving on to our semifinals. And uh, this is not a tournament to take lightly. The prize pool is quite big with $1,000 yeah. of the total pri cash prizing. Um, we've got 100 or er, Sorry, five hundred dollars for first place, uh, two fifty for second, and third and fourth get one twenty-five respectively. So uh, these players are going to be playing for money on the line as well, and it's going to be very, very exciting to see what they can do and bring out. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's just solid for a day's work of, of what you, maybe they would just normally be playing sol solo queue all Saturday, but instead they got to get got there with the other with their team and to potentially you know come some cash at the end of the day for it. So that would be certainly nice for them. But uh, before we get into the kind of the match and and, and all that, good to give a shout out to one of the sponsors today before all of this canto if you're looking for the final piece for your work from home or gaming setup find everything you need to build the best workstation or battle station at cantoliving.com check out their monitor mounts speaker and stands today as well the one thing i want to mention to them too is that like they have the they can make your setup look super 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 clean and you just check out them once again that's cantoliving.com all right, Bowser. Yeah, we're we're getting ready for for this matchup to get us all started here. But these teams have obviously played a, a little bit of a, a long tournament. It's uh, it's been 14 teams kind of show up for it. We're down to eight already. Three matches before this best of ones to, through the Swiss rounds. That's kind of, that's a that's a long, grueling day. What do you get? What do you tell your team? I know you're a coach yourself. What do you tell your team? Like, hey, we we played through those three very important matches with only three swiss rounds to get into the quarters that's that's tough and now you still got to show up because like, like i mentioned earlier it's a best of one yeah mental resiliency is like the biggest part and if your team is like a team that's been together for a while and scrimming for for long days this is kind of an environment that you've actually prepared for because generally like with the team that i work with we, we we try to schedule scrim blocks that kind of match the idea of how a tournament format works so uh what we do is like two two scrims back to back then maybe like a short 30 minute break get water get snacks refreshments and then right yeah. there you're mentally reset go back into it another scrim block of two more scrims so if, if these teams are really trying to get the bag today uh, i hope they've come prepared and well prepped to to be able to to take on the the long grueling day of what this tournament it's going to be mm -hmm. yeah because exactly you're saying long grueling day because even after this you you win the one you got to play two more best of threes to get it all done and, and it might sound easy you know it's just people playing video games like i said maybe they'd be playing solo queue the whole time but it's just a, it's just it just hits different right when you're when you're playing a tournament that you know is for something even like yeah it's 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 not a million dollars but it's still just like it's cash for playing and playing uh, a video game you love playing a, a game that all these players played a really high level everyone's immortal we got one radiant player in here like they're all they're all really strong players so there's just going to be nothing easy in this match 
for sure. Nothing easy indeed. And all these teams are here are here to show up. And I just want to highlight all the teams that are going to be playing in the quarters because we're only going to be able to stream one of the quarter matches. So it'd be mm -hmm. nice to go through and uh, talk about every team that's made it this far and give them sure. a shout out as well. So looking at the, the bracket side of things in the playoffs, uh, we're going to have T Val White taking on Stanky Boys. The match that we're broadcasting right now for you guys will be Swag and Friends against Puggers. Then we've got In Control and Team Body Improvement Club. And last but not least, Amarok Esports is going to be taking out Wary Boys in our playoffs. So, do you have any familiar with any of these teams? I know you said that uh, P Nasty is one of the players that you've seen before, but any other uh, any other these teams ring a bell or uh, you kind of seen before maybe? Uh, honestly, not by team name alone, but I know just sometimes when people enter a tournament, they just kind of come in and just throw out fun team names or whatever, like Swag and Friends and, and, and such like that. It's probably not their, like, necessarily their normal team name, but I'm sure uh, as the day kind of goes on, I'll just like, I'm like, oh, I know that guy. I see that. I've seen that guy around tournaments or whatever. So, and like uh, sometimes too, with, with shorter tournaments like this, um, some people do mix it up because I know P Nasty was playing, playing with a few different folks before too, as well. Um, just uh, obviously just recognize the name. So sometimes you actually even mix up your teams for, for a tournament like this. It's just a short tournament, one day short. It's a long single day, but it, it, it it's not like you're, you're playing through two weeks or three weeks or whatever of, uh, of a tournament. So uh, yeah, it's, well, 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 yeah, we'll have to see as we go through the day. And one thing that you did note as you were kind of mentioning those brackets, the, the two, three and O teams, well, those were the two teams that beat these, were the only teams to beat these two teams so far in this tournament. So obviously like neither of these teams lost to bad matchups or anything they just like they they clearly those two three no teams are are very very strong so that just means like they, these two teams might just be a shade under um the best team so far in the tournament because um it, it's a little bit tough to with such a short tournament to determine like kind of who's the favorites or all that but either one of these teams we could we could be following them all the way to the finals yeah and uh, I, it's awesome that you mentioned that and i really love production for choosing this match because uh the two teams that were the three and no teams were t val white and in control and it'd be really nice to see how the other teams that weren't able to beat them, how they play and why may maybe if, when we do see them later on T-Val White and In Control, we can kind of understand why these teams weren't able to topple them or what they would need to do in order to improve and get better to be able to beat those 3-0 teams. So uh, really highlight and shout out to, to production for picking this game for us to watch today. Yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be fun, fun match to analyze and break down for you guys here uh, to, to, to see some more great Valorant. Yeah, yeah, and, and and while you're talking about those TOs too, while we're still setting up this match, we'll talk about the very TOs here today. The TGS today's event is put on by Canada's leader in esports. That is the gaming stadium. So if you're looking for the next big thing in competitive gaming, you're here already. So good job. The team at the gaming stadium are leaders in online esports tournaments and events. So check out all the action at TGS. Dot G G. Of course, this is part of like the the anniversary. Uh, two year anniversary of TGS and all that the uh, anniversary month. So they're hosting a bunch of tournaments, including this one here in Valorant. So really, really awesome stuff they're putting on again, TGS.GG to check that out. Uh, uh, any game, if, maybe in Valorant's not even game. There's, there's League of Legends. I know there's League of Legends sign up going on right now too. Tons of stuff. Last week they had Hearthstone. They're always doing stuff. There's a game for you. Trust me. Check it out. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Shout out to TGS as well. Uh, they're always doing awesome stuff in esports, and uh, shoutouts for making this broadcast possible. Just to be able to deliver all the 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 live action of Valorant, just to, for all the viewers at home, and for for everyone that's here tuned in. And thanks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, we can get this game underway soon. But uh, while we wait, is there anything uh, you want to mention about Valorant? Like, I, I know lots of esports news have been has been circulating <laughs> around recently. Have you seen any of it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, do we want to bring up? I don't want to bring up drama here. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys, if you Google Valorant right now, there, 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 there's some drama. If you want to check it out, I don't. Know. Let's make this a happy place. Okay, We're gonna okay. Be here for a stepping few hours. away from the genre, then <laughs> teasers, cool skin lines, things that they're talking yeah. about in the next patch. Like, have you seen any of that though? No, actually, uh, I'm behind on, on on that. Why don't you Why don't you fill us in a little bit? Okay, so so there's gonna be a new agent coming in the next episode. Um, if you haven't seen it already, there is a teaser on YouTube from the official Valorant uh, YouTube channel, and it looks nice. like it's gonna be a robot character with abilities mm. to disable abilities. So that's exciting. Fun. Yeah. I, the the my my favorite thing is not to be able to do the thing that I want to do when I play the game. <laughs> <laughs> 
But it, I think it makes kind of sense on the timing of bringing in an agent that can do something like this, because uh, right. I, I don't know if you saw, like, in, in Masters V1 playing that post-plant meta, that seems mm -hmm. terrible to play against. And bringing in an agent like this can really change mm -hmm. the dynamic of the game into more like a, a, a shooter instead of just uh, a, a ability, utility, usage type of game. And it's going to be yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. to see how they bring the mechanic into the game. Because uh, I've seen in like Overwatch, for example, if I'm not sure if you're familiar with, there is an agent yeah. that is similar that has the ability to disable abilities. And it uh, mm -hmm. looks like we're actually going to be heading into the match very, very right. soon. So, All right, we're 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 finally into this one, folks. Again, if you are just joining us today, it's Swag and Friends versus Puggers here in our quarter final for the TGS Anniversary Month Valorant Tournament. And we're, we're just right into it. We're into Ascent, and we're getting started right away. Um, let's, let's see our agents here. What do you got? Anything spicy right now? All right, so starting off with Sag and Friends, we're running Double Duelist with the Raisin Jet, Sova, Astra, and Killjoy supporting it. And uh, same thing on the other sides of Puggers, but instead opting for the Phoenix. Nope. Yeah, we'll definitely see how that goes with them. It makes it a little more aggressive on the attack as we are already into this pistol round. Watching Swagcon kind of look around here and wait for an opponent to kind of show up. They're playing this one fairly patiently here, but they're all ready and surrounded around this A site. Looks like Wraith was able to take down one. So Pretty is already taken down. They've yet to get themselves anywhere near on the site, but the defense is going pretty well right now. Yeah, so I can friends had a four stack towards A there and we're able to stop that single lurk coming in through A main. So looks like Puggers are going to start rotating towards mid and heading towards the B site. But little do they know, mm -hmm. they're still going to be met with a Killjoy turret and a Nano Swarm at the entrance. So it's not going to be an easy take at all. Yeah, they're starting to make their hit onto this B site as, as they move forward here. Here's Kip. He's able to pick down a couple and take down this attack quickly. Fireball Ops looks like they took down P Nasty and Exotic Aggro is able to finish that one off clean. Pistol round so far for Swagger Friends. Yeah, Puggers weren't really sure of what the strategy was on the pistol there. They kind of went for like an A split, but they left a lurker towards A and at that moment, Swag and Friends decided to aggress, and they were able to pick off one off of the, the, the gravity well. And from yeah. there, the rotate towards B was kind of telegraphed a little bit, and they still hadn't destroyed the Killjoy utility at the entrance of the site, making that site so difficult. And Kip getting one with the Nano Swarm, and then finishing the second with the, the classic right click, of course. And the rest of the round is just <laughs> cleaned up from there. Yeah, easy stuff. And here we go. We're getting a little bit of a fight here as we're watching Rate fire through this smoke. Let's see. Ooh, swag on. Popping them in the face. As we wait, Kip here watching through this smoke, waiting to see if anyone comes down here. Loose pistol goes next. It's in a nice spot. If anyone were to pop into there, here's Kip, though. He's going to meet up with a couple here. I really like this coming out from Puggers here. They're trying to cut noise here and make Swag and Friends get antsy and try to maybe go for a stack or gamble play so that Swag and Friends have to look for information here. But now Puggers, realizing that Swag and Friends not aggressing anywhere, are trying to decide on where to go. So there's no information on the side. Great. Right. Ooh. Rate's going for the swag play. He's going to pull it off. Takes down loose pistol. Go next. But eventually, Stinky's able to finish them off from behind. Here's Aggro. Trying to deal with anyone else here. Wildfire now is going to be able to walk up and take down Swagcon. Trying to get onto the site there, but Stinky's going to stop them in their tracks. Aggro looking for a shot onto Pretty here. Just rolling around the corner. Keeping that left click down. But it's now 2v2 here for the retake. Let's see what these two people can do to stop them. Yeah, Puggers opting to play for the double hell setup on the post plant here. It's got the Cypher Cam. It's going to spot out one towards the door. Kip's going to find one and has a Nano Swarm still to use. And that's going to be P Nasty getting taken down. Oh, shock us. Stinky able to pick up a 3K, but Kip ends up finishing off the round. We'll get this defuse off too as well. So it will be a quick 2-0 start here for Swag and Friends. Yeah, and that retake there was quite easy if I would say so. Because the, all they had was the Cypher Camp to spot out the information of one player. But when you're mm -hmm. kind of split up in hell, one side, one to each side, you kind of isolate the fights into a 1v1 for each player. And P, P Nasty, I think it was, with the, the Nano Swarm still, was able to yeah. flush out. And uh, from there, it's just, just easy trading after because uh, Stinky didn't have anything but a shorty to, to try to get any kills. Yeah. But you'll certainly take what Puggers did there after losing the pistol round, did a ton of damage to the enemy team, so still able to 
get themselves in a better spot economy-wise here for now this third round. But here we go. Stinky is already on top. He's going to try to dash away. Fireball Ops looks like he got one with the Sheriff, though. Where's able to take it with Pretty, but... Here we go, Swagcon meeting up with a couple, oh, it sprays down both of them! Wildfire, do you want to walk into this one too? There's the Molly, gotta come out, take him down! Lose Pistol, go next! He's able to grab that one, Second friends now, 2v4. And a 2v4 retake like this is very, very tough. If you're you're on the side of Swag and friends, you're probably just trying to look for as much economic damage as you can, and not let okay. them bring any more rifles into the next round. Kip trying to make some noise here. Aggro certainly wants to help too as well. Going to take down that door, but... It's going to be very, very tough to pull off against two of them. And Stinky is going to stop it right away. So likely, potentially, Kip will just want to save what they got. No, they're just going to go in, grab one more kill. But Swagcon will finish off the round with 3k. Yeah. Kip. And there you go. Puggers take their first round here. It's now 2-1. to one. Tough situation there for Kip. Not much you can do. It's really nice that he... Kit was able to get the economic damage, gets a single kill. Um, dying there is not the worst option. That gives you the, the full amount of money that you take over to the next round, and that's going to allow Kip to buy up a rifle. And they've got mm -hmm. big guns this round, too. Big, big guns on two different players, if you see what I'm seeing. Yeah, they're able to grab a couple of those, and we'll certainly see how much damage they could do with that. Ultimate starting to come into play, too. As a couple is out there, you can hear the... Blade Storm being popped now, being used this round. Fireball Ops spots went towards top mid. So they know it's going to be some sort of a default as they hear the Aldrone as well as spot out a player towards Ooh. A main. So in mental note on defense, one top mid, two in A main. So, see what they can do with that information though. And right now they're playing this one fairly, fairly slowly here in this one. Did hear that op, of course. It often slows you down in your tracks there. Want to play around it, potentially. It looks like the... And Stinky again with the Blade Storm. Seeing if they can get some free kills here with this one. Oh, right, though! Turns the corner, takes down Stinky. Jet versus Jet action. 5v4 now. Huge opening pick coming up from Rate. Rate with the nice op shot and those big guns on the side of Swag and Friends already finding impact. Fireball Ops also takes down P-Nasty. Yeah, gonna take down one more, so only three members left here of Puggers. Those pistol going next, trying to deal with people on both sides of them. Eventually goes down to Wildfire, but Swagcon, the police trade here. Swagcon now going to pop the run it back and just get themselves onto site here. Wildfire in astral form. Oh no, but look Swagcon at this. goes back. Swycon had the spike with the run it back, and that's gonna send oh. him back all the way into B main, and now it's a oh. tough situation. Puggers. Just with Swagcon left in the one on three. Uh, congratulations, you played yourself, Swagcon. <laughs> with the ultimate goes in, but like you said, goes all the way back, and uh, that is one of the most unfortunate uses <laughs> of the Phoenix ultimate I've maybe seen in a little while there. But well, he's he got five kills so far in this game. He's playing good, but he's gonna feel he's gonna feel bad about that one. They're gonna meme on him for that play after. Yeah, so that round was really, really big on the side of Swag and Friends. They purchased up two very big guns, the Odin and the Operator. And the Operator actually finding impact instantly, finding the first blood of that mm -hmm. round. And from there, it was just a slaughter fest, trying to figure out where the rest of the players were on default. We got a five stack here over towards the A site. But looks like potentially they are backing... Oh, for them. No, the four of them are committing over here on this A side. Swagcon is trying to go in there, trying to lead the charge. Fireball Ops here, looking around to see what they can defend, but they're kind of surrounded here. They will pick up one, but Swagcon picks up one. That does get traded as Kipping him down. Wildfire and Stinky are able to get trade as well, so that puts us to a 3v2 in favor of Swag and Friends. What's the last two members of Puggers going to be able to do on here? They're still moving on towards this A site. Spike is still here too. They got to pick that one back up. I have retrieved the spike. There's the recon bolt, just to try to see if we can scan any out members of Puggers out. Rate's gonna spot one towards A main and finds the recon Ooh. spy camera. Stinky though. Do we do now here? I wonder if Stinky is gonna be able to Kip, who's been kind of hanging out behind them. Oh, turns around pretty much right when they were about to meet up there. They get this plant off though, so let's go with the retake. Kip is gonna start it off nicely. Puts it now to a one v two. Can they clutch this one out? 
Stinky gets taken down. Swag and friends will pick up another round here and prove to 4-1. Yeah, perfectly played there on the 2v1. Kip getting the first contact, takes the first kill onto the Cypher, planting the spike towards Jen. And from there, doesn't choose to push through the switch. Let's aggro <laughs> push out of heaven to get the next contact because the player next to next to Kip there is going to be aware of the per player on switch, but not the one out on heaven. And the 2v2 is perfect there for the retake. Yeah, the, the, the timing of, I can't remember who exactly it was when, when they backed off and decided to commit to the A site. If they actually stayed for that moment longer, took out Kip, they might have had an opportunity to rotate all the way towards the B site and get kind of a, a, an easy plant that, on that side in a 2v2. Two, two but, you yeah. know, uh, every once in a while, that the, 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 the time is just not with you. And obviously, we, we just see it with perfect vision. So it's just like, oh, if only they stayed and got that. Especially with Kip popping off so far at 7-2 and two here. Could have been a nice shutdown to be able to pick that one up there. But again, Swag and Friends are up here 4 and 1 and are rolling along nicely. I'm really liking Swag and Friends' early aggression with Rate on the Operator. Always try to look for those picks as much as possible whenever her dash is up. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a high impact play if Stinky does l decide to lurk through B main. Uh, yeah, waiting for it. Dry peeks that. Rate takes him out, dashes away. Yeah. Just like we said it. Here we go. Oh, Kip though, continuing their hot streak, taking down two more. Even has time to reload their gun and look for another one. Loose pistol go next is down on HP too. Stinky probably was the one that did the damage there. Meanwhile, Stinky just in behind them. <laughs> Able to pick up a couple. Aggro will trade, but still 3v1 now. Loose pistol go next, last one standing for Puggers. 21 HP. He's going to have to find three headshots here if they want to be able to clutch this one out. But it's going to be difficult with the spike all the way back at top mid. But Ooh, he taps the first. So one tap them all. Easy. Just kidding. Rate is able to take them down. 5 1 lead now for Swag and friends. But... Johnny, imagine a world where Lose Pistol Go Next gets that, oh. that, that from the shadows off, gets oh. the spike. Yeah, man, it was it, they, they, they themselves. You could tell they, they saw how they were gonna do it in their head. They were trying to pull it off there, but uh, unfortunately, just got shut down while in the middle of even thinking about it. But player that's impressing me so much so far has been Kip. Just absolutely solid. You saw that spray transfer in that last round, and just been extremely consistent. And able to do it on one of those agents that doesn't like have built-in mobility to go around. Like that's not <laughs> your duelist champion that they're playing there. But just good at shooting a gun, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Kip actually actually also has like two or three frags off of the Nano Swarm alone too. So <laughs> yeah. the setups are not being broken by Puggers, and Puggers might need to start trying to figure out what the, the setup is with the Killjoy. Uh oh. Trying to bait out the shot. It's better than bait out. Rate hit that one. Stinky, you can't challenge that. Rate is just too good on this operator. I think that's three rounds in a row. Rate's gotten the first blood, and those first blood matter so much as every oh. single kill transforms the match into a, a numbers advantage situation where you just have to trade down with your teammates. Oh, uh, yeah. Thirty seconds left here in this round. See if Sucker Roger will get down there. And we hear Rate fired a gun, and they got another kill. As usual. One enemy remaining. Oh, but there's Aggro wanting to get a couple kills from the tails, and Kip not wanting to be forgotten either. He's gonna pick up that one in a flawless round there for Puggers. Clean one as they're now up six to one. Yeah, and it's so ironic to me that Puggers is actually the team that's not playing Puggy at all. Like, all the, the, the <laughs> yeah. fights that they've taken are smart fights that they always have teammates close enough to trade, or it's a dry peak with an operator if you have the jet dash up. And it, it's it's just very, very textbook play coming out from Puggers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is certainly a map that's treating them very, very well, at least on the defensive side here. But here we go, we have five stack. Maybe they go for the A rush. Yeah, and this is the A-Rush coming out. Here comes the showstopper. Show uh, that, that, well, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> he gets traded up. Wildfire at least takes down Stinky, but uh, the most anticlimactic showstopper. Hopefully that we see today. Hopefully we see more impressive ones a little later. Bomb about to be planned here. Run it back. Pop by Swagcon. 
here looking to see if they can make a difference in this one. Just kidding, they'll walk into the smoke, they get taken down, but they'll just go back to their original spot, see what they can do here. Pretty now, with the Sheriff trying to get something done from long range. Hunter's Fury gonna uh, be used out towards the gen, try to break that lockdown. Swaycon, the only one left in hell. And now it's just pretty in wine and is gonna be instantly shut down by rate. All right, seven to one lead now for the Puggers. They are absolutely playing a clean game. And we were coming to this one, expecting it to potentially be close. Both two and one team, both highly ranked players on both sides. But right now, Puggers just have Swag and Friends number. Yeah, Puggers have been very, very, very good with the, the util usage. So first of all, let's mention on how that round opened up. There was a showstopper used towards Jen, and even though the first blood didn't go over to the side of Puggers, it was instantly traded by Wildfire in, in Heaven, so mm -hmm. there's no numbers advantage. And after that, they know they're playing a retake situation. Hunter's Fury, Nova Pulse, everything being used on the site as they retake, and that leaves them with four members alive still in a really great economy going into every single round now. Yeah, they're going to be laughing through the rest of this half, at the very least. Let's see what they got here. So I can friends this time, they're trying to play this one a little calmer. The one around, they, they, they did kind of end up, they got some nice picks off to start off, and that's what they want to do now, but they can't find that one. Kip able to take down P-Nasty. Yeah, P-Nasty just trying to lurk through, but no timing there, and whiffs a little bit as well so kip gets the upper hand there and is able to fall back and look at where everyone's positioned buggers always someone close to trade always someone close to trade Ooh, fireball ops takes down so icon as they were just trying to move and take some information onto the site but they can't even get the trade which is what you want to do at least in that situation but right now they just seem to be being out fragged here by puggers Fireball off, picking up another one of those VC there. A couple of people go down, leaving Lose Pistol go next by themselves. They at least took down Fireball Ops and then are able to take down Aggro. But they got a long way to go for this clutch. 30 seconds left to go on this one. Rate fires, dashes. Barely misses that shot, though. He picks this one again. I don't think Rate missed it. Ooh, Lose Pistol go next, though. He's got himself three. Looking for another. He suddenly got four. It's suddenly a 1v1, but there's only 13 seconds left. He's got to pick up the spike. Oh, Kip shuts it down! Almost was gonna be the craziest 1v5 clutch to start a tournament, but Kip says no. Yeah, and that one was kinda crazy. Loose Pistol go next, alone in A main, sh shoots the recon bolt, so Agro knows that Loose Pistol's there. Agro tries to solo swing it, knowing that's a 4v1 probably, and it's like, oh, I'm just taking this, this is an <laughs> ego peak. But Loose Pistol wins that one convincingly, yeah. and the Rate misses a, a shot as well. Then gets dry swung one tapped from long range with a phantom, and now it becomes a winnable situation. But uh, and, and I almost feel like if he if he didn't have like only 14 seconds left and had to rush pick up the spike and like not you know check every corner and make sure everything was kind of safe, he maybe would have been able to put it off. But so close there, rate uh, another miss there. We haven't seen too many misses from them, but then we'll miss out on that one. Yeah, it seems sometimes forget there's always a sixth enemy in the server, and that enemy is their time. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Trade happened. Wildfire and Swagcon will pick up one each. So it's still now down to a 4v4 as they're trying to get onto the site. P Nasty does find Kip and takes him down. Fireball Ops will get that. Neural Steph on line two, so Puggers will all be spotted out. And that does signal to them, hey, that we can get onto this B site. So that's exactly where they head with that information from the neural theft. But the bond, or rather, the spike is not quite there yet. As we watch it walk up now, we're gonna get it down onto the side here. Let's see if loose pistol go next. He's gonna be able to pick off here. If they don't pick this, oh, nice spot. Right gets taken down, but aggro comes out and avenges their teammate. Two v two here for the retake. And Swag and friends finally pick up a round. Swagcon gets a nice little frag there. Leaving aggro here. He's gonna stand in this fire. P Nasty will finish him off and swag and friends not going down without a fight are able to pick up their second round. Yeah, it was a really good round coming up from Swag and Friends. One that was one in fact. But what happened was essentially the trade coming out in middle, a neural theft mm -hmm. being used, getting all the information they know need to know to take that B site free, and from there the post plant setup was pretty well played. They had one mm -hmm. towards uh, the lane side, able to peek and get a timing onto a player, get that pick, a lurker in middle to get off the jet, and then from there you just play crossfire on the last player, and um, they won that round 
quite convincingly. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, and a player that stepped up in that round ha has been peeing nasty. I noted before, just them. I've, I've watched this guy pop off before in previous tournaments, but oh, we watched Fireball Hops take down two. And then there's P Nasty. There we go, taking out Rate, who's been so strong so far in this game. But yeah, he had a huge step up performance in that last round that kind of led to that win. And if he can kind of continue that level of play, um, they still got a shot at this. Like, obviously, 8 to 2, or even before this, 8 to 1 was not a situation you want to be in, but they can certainly get this one done. Yeah, so but I get... here's. So I can friends Go here, ahead, not a lot of map control here. Only has top mid to work with. They don't have any control. Tiles is being fully mm -hmm. taken over right now. And this is going to be good for two, probably. Oh, aggro spray and transfers to the second. Got to look for a third here, but p is able to take him down. All of a sudden, p has got a 3k. And ooh, now he, he's got to go for the clutch here. Certainly two members doable. left, one of them. Yeah, one's low HP, so it's, it's very, very doable. 35 seconds is a decent amount of time to get it done, too, with. Ah, if they were able to pick up that one, then maybe they could have rotated back towards the B side or challenged last onto A, but the unfortunate there. It'll be last round of the half. 9-2 to two lead now for Puggers. Yeah, P Nasty in that 1v2 did have two cyber cages up and the spy cam to work with. But turning that corner, the processor placement wasn't exactly perfect for the player standing <laughs> on top of the box and makes it a quite difficult shot. Um, nice play by Puggers, though. They, even if they weren't able to get that kill fr from the player on the catwalk, the other one was in the tree room ready to trade that one back, anyways. All right, looks like potentially a B rush here. That's going to get thwarted well, at least they're instantly. all stacked there. Yeah, exactly. Just instantly not going on there. So they're going to spread back out. Yeah, and if they can find a way to get a couple picks here, maybe they can get something started. Swagcon picks up. Ooh, oh, exotic aggro able to get that with the Hunter's Fury. Got a couple of them. Meanwhile, Rate is going to take down Stinky, who is trying to make a swag play. And then Loose Pistol go next. Just burst down Fireball Ops, leaving himself... Try to do against three more here. From the shadows. Gonna try to get onto the other side. Is right by Aggro there. Oh, looks away at the wrong time though. Aggro now picks up 3k in that round. Ends off this half. 10 to 2 for Puggers. Puggers just very, very strong on the team play. Uh, like once again, there they were using the Hunter's Fury from the beast site. And at the same time, Kit pushing up to try to get anyone holding their knives out, trying to dodge those Hunter's Fury. And because of that, the they had to take a duel. And the other two players probably had to be scared and not, not focused on dodging. And from there, mm -hmm. picks up two kills with the Hunter's Fury and puts that puts himself at the top rank position now. Yeah, and that's a scary thing when you know he's top ragging when we've already talked about how well Kip's been playing. We've talked about how well Rate's been on the op. It's just like, there's, there's no weak point. <laughs> you, could, you could spread those three cost map and the rest of the team is playing solid too as well. So it's like, it's always so hard. Like sometimes when it's just like one player, it's like, hey, it's just the, the jet player with the op. We can like play around that. When everyone is popping off on the enemy team, that's like, what do you do? Yeah, and right here. Oh, oh. pretty gonna get caught Crap. out with the classic in hand, and Kip goes in for the next one on loose pistol. Now it's just down to Stinky it alone in this backside, double dinked as well, and then sprayed <laughs> through smoke by Raiden. This round is looking close to over in a 4v2 situation. Spike planted. And that's tough because you really, really want to take the pistol around after that half. P Nasty, though, gets at least a solid frag there onto Kip. They get to do a little bit more than that. So Icon, though, takes down Raid. So now all of a sudden we're back to 2v2. So this is certainly defense. Wildfire. Doing a decent amount of damage to both of them. They're both pretty hurt up there. Wildfire will then finish off P Nasty. We'll watch Swagcon here grab that one more frag, but Fireball Ops will clean it up. Puggers now up 11 to 2, a couple away from losing this one. Yeah, 4v2 situations like that. All you gotta do is pair up with the partner and look for the last two players. Uh, if one of you dies, the other should be able to trade back. The first two players on the side of Puggers were a little bit stranded on their own. One in the bottom of mid and the other one towards the site. But the last two players both backside able to trade for each other and Puggers were able to finish that round out convincingly. 11-2 here. Yeah, and here we are. Puggers just 
absolutely playing strongly here, and Swag and Friends just haven't been able to find an answer. Again, you kind of hope you at least take the pistol round in that second and a half, so that kind of makes it give you a shot, but losing that pistol round almost makes it feel like it's over, but let's see if Swag and Friends can fight this out. Loose pistol go next, certainly. Wants to find a cheeky way to fight it out. There, we got a trade there from Stinky and Wildfighter. Kip then taking down another target here. We watch Pretty go down here to Fireball Ops Swagcon running back there. So they try to throw it a flash, but they get the bomb planted here. Two players left on Swag and Friends for this retake. And Swag himself and Nasty, only one of his friends, get yeah. it done. This time around, Puggers with a little better of a post path setup. All four players on the B site in angles where they can double swing, trade, and fight with each other here. Uh, not opting to make the same mistake they did last round. Ooh, just clean finish there and now it's on to match point match again point. it's a best of one quarter final so winner here is going straight into semis yeah, these... and right now swag and friends is just all but done yeah swag and friends are being a little bit outclassed by puggers here who are not pugging anything else at, at all though these are <laughs> this is an organized pug team where they're always trading and they made a little bit of a screw up or a hiccup in the pistol round where they had two stragglers in the 4v2 situation when they were low. This time around, all four players on site, no chance of even taking down more than one gun. Mm -hmm. This made it hard. There you go. Got four of them stacked over here toward the A site. And they're running onto it right now. Rate's going to dash forward. Yeah, spoke. P Nasty, though, is able to grab one, and so did Los Pusto go next. So I caught anything going down here. We watch Rate now. Trying to deal with anyone coming on over. Loose pistol go next. Swag and friends walk back and have a number advantage this time around. So let's see how they play this one out and hope to, to see if they have the organization that puggers do when they ha get these number situation. Ooh. Pretty with the dry swing on by themselves in heaven. It's back in the 3v2. Fireball ops here. Gonna switch out his gun there. You Grab the judge. It. Cosmic Divide coming down Player from standing. the Astro Player will throw off Fireball Ops enough for Penis to pick that up. So only one player left here. Wildfire gets taken down by Penasty, who's got his 3K. And like I said, this team when Penasty is is on, he's he's on. But at that nine and twelve score, I believe at some point he was like one and ten. Like he just wasn't feeling it. But lately he has been, and it's certainly start to make the most recent rounds interesting but the score line is 12 to 3 it just might be too little too late yeah too little too At late indeed we'll they're gonna have to make it a very very convincing round after round in order to get mm -hmm. the economy back into the state where they can be able to to snowball and go keep winning to get back for this comeback but it doesn't look like that could be the case here it definitely could be difficult I've seen crazier things, Shadows traveling. but it's definitely a tall task if everyone on Puggers plays as well as we've already seen them be able to play, and Wildfire getting started off, just getting that headshot, Aggro's gonna pick up another one, so only three people left here for Swag and Friends, and the hopes of their tournament are on the line here. Yeah, two opening picks on two players that are solo by themselves looking for information, and if you're not Jet and you don't have that dash to get away, you shouldn't be taking those risks without utility, and now it puts your team in a 5v3 situation where everyone on the side of Puggers are healthy. Uh, they just didn't get enough damage to them, probably didn't even get enough information here. Kip, meanwhile, taking down Stinky means they can't do what they want. Oh, except One Pretty will at least remaining. shut them down here. But they're getting onto this A site now. We watch right here. Showstopper's coming out. Gonna threaten anyone that wants to come near it, and it's just pretty... Trying to get anything done here. Rate right, will finish it off. It'll be a clean 13-3 win here for Puggers, and they're going on to the semifinals. Yeah, and the Puggers just looking like a monstrous team at this point. And it's not a single player that I would even try to highlight here. It's the whole team playing as a unit, playing together. So first off, like in any start of a round, what they do is they work together and have the utility to look for those opening picks. Once they expend that utility for those opening picks, they back up, give the space back to the attack side, sit back on site on defense, because they know they have the numbers advantage, and all they need to mm -hmm. do is play situations where they can trade out, and Puggers executing yeah. it perfectly in almost all the rounds there, show why they're the dominant team.
Yeah, and and like you're saying, like yeah, there there weren't like well, there was tons of people that like would shine at different individual moments, but ultimately, yeah, it just came down to this huge team play, and 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 when a player needed to shine, they, they could shine just fine, um, and and they were able to get it done. But that usually becomes because everyone is is doing their job on their team, right? You're not getting surprised by anything that's kind of happening some other place of the map, so you can kind of focus on your one thing. So when you get into those one v one situations, you're just gonna win them because 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 you have so much trust in your team and wow this team is definitely a force to be reckoned with through the rest of the tournament yeah and just just to wa I want to like give a shout out to to, to rate specifically i think rate mm -hmm. was one of my star players even though rate wasn't the top rank of the entire server rate was always consistently finding those opening picks i think it was mm -hmm. three rounds in a row with the operator purchase right after on the third round when rate stayed up for the op instantly impact round after yeah. round first blood with the op getting those peaks with the dash up and finding those shots even if players jump spotting her towards a main she hits those yeah right she's the kind of player that sets the tempo for the for the rest of the team right and and when you know okay our opera is going to be doing that our jet player is going to be doing this stuff it makes everyone else's job so much easier when you can just kind of trust they're going to hold down this angle they're going to hold down this spot and like no one's going to be able to do anything about it yeah, right. Certainly impressed me in this one. Yeah, and uh, just to, 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 to not take anything away from the uh, the other team that played here, they've made a very, very great run, and they should be proud of mm -hmm. how far they've come. This was a very, very strong team that they had to come up against, and unfortunately, they weren't able to, to, to get over this hurdle, but hopefully mm -hmm. they can take this uh, game away and take it as a learning experience on yeah. how it is to play more of a team-based environment rather than playing an actual pugging team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, we are going to set up into our semifinals. This, again, was just a best of one quarter final. So we'll go to a quick break here. But uh, why don't you give some uh, shout outs to some of our sponsors yeah, before, before we, we head off to that break? Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Monster Cat. Uh, if you guys have not heard about Monster Cat or Monster Cat Gold, uh, it's a great service for five bucks a month where you can download and stream thousands of Monster Cat songs from top electronic artists. And What's more is if you're a content creator, Twitch streamer, YouTuber, whatnot, all this music is DMCA free. I repeat, DMCA free. So no claims, no strikes on any of your videos. Make sure you go check out Monster Cat Gold. And uh, shout out to another sponsor of Encorp. So if you want a fast and easy way to recycle at your energy drinks, cans of pop, juice boxes you've just finished refueling on, uh, Make sure you go to Return Express. There's no sorting, no lineups, no handling cash, and refunds to deposit straight to your online account. You can just drop off your empties at the Express Depot near you and go. Signing up is easy as well. Just head to return-it.ca forward slash express to give your empties a second life. So shout outs again to our sponsor. Without them, this tournament would not be happening and we wouldn't have the prizes for all the players and all the teams that have come out today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. I said, I, I, the whole time I was trying to find if I had anything re really recyclable. I'm like, I've already kind of recycled everything just to show off recyclable <laughs> things. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, that will be it for the quarterfinals. We'll be back with the semifinals when we set that up here in our TGS Anniversary Month Valorant Tournament. So don't touch that browser, folks. We will see you all soon.